We've all been there, right? Work stress, troubled relationships, family drama. When everything is coming at you at once and you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to, it seems like you're going to explode. Now, back in the day, we do like our parents did. Just bottle it all up, keep it moving, and pretend like everything's just fine. But it's 2023 now, and after years of stigma, mental health and therapy have finally taken a front seat in the public consciousness. So now you're ready for a therapist, but you don't know where to start? Let's talk about how to find the right one for you today on Porsche. Welcome to the conversation. Did you know the concept of therapy has actually been around since before there was written language? Seriously, it's true. Archaeologists haven't even found references to healing with words in ancient Greek and before that in Egyptian writing. So folks have been trying to get some help now for a minute, but finding a therapist is only half the battle. Finding the right therapist is just as important. And here to help us navigate this process, our relationship therapist and counselor, Dr. Cassandra Bolar, and psychologist, Dr. Alduin Tart. Welcome back to the show. You two always give such great advice, and we've had so many interesting conversations and helpful conversations. I'm so first of all, I'm glad we, we coordinated. We did, we had to coordinate. <laughs> we did have to coordinate today. But we're also trying to coordinate what therapy looks like, right? right? Because, you know, New Year and some folks said, this is it. This is the year I'm going to put myself first. And therapy is so much a part of that for any number of reasons, right? Right, right. You, you want to take care of your mental health just like you do your physical health. You know, a lot of times people make uh, those New Year's resolutions about, you know, how they want their bodies to get in the best shape. But mm -hmm. we also want to take care of our mental health as well. It's just as important Absolutely. as our physical if not health. more important, yes. right? Because well, you can look fabulous, but if you are feeling like you are falling apart, eventually it all kind of starts to fall apart. Well, let's mm -hmm. keep it real. That's most people. The Instagram, yeah. Facebook was good. Yeah. But in the house. And saw that false flag on social media. <laughs> got everybody mixed up, right? In yes. the house is stressful. And especially men, we tend to bottle things up, right. which yes. means it gets worse. So why wouldn't you disclose it? Why wouldn't you put it out there mm -hmm. so that you can address it? And if we're talking about our different communities, a lot of us have been through trauma. We've yes. been through things. Life is right. hard. This last couple of years has been hard. Exactly. And so we're still, you know, we're a little bit more removed out of sort of the worst of the COVID-19 pandemic. But there's still the fallout. There's still mm -hmm. the reverb for our children, for our spouses, our parents, you know, mm -hmm. that classroom setting. Right. Everyone's still sort of getting through this. But mm -hmm. we know for men and women, it looks different. We all have some mental health issues that we need to address. But it's different trying to figure out where to go and where to start, right? Well, I mean, it's not easy because you have to look at your insurance, see what you can right. afford, yeah. see what's close, mm -hmm. who's who has openings, mm -hmm. the the fit. It's mm -hmm. it's a lot. Who's but doing so it in person? Who's doing it still online? Because right. I remember when I was, you know, full disclosure here, was trying to find therapy during the pandemic. The idea of doing it online made me even more anxious mm -hmm. because all of those online meeting forums were driving me crazy too. Yes. There was some anxiety, anxiety. with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So trying to find the right platform is important too, right? Yeah, it's most important, especially I work with a lot of families. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's hard for them to get out of the house, get a babysitter. <laughs> so sometimes actually having it at home is, is a wonderful benefit for them. But then also too, just like in your situation, you wanted something in person. You were right. tired of being behind the but screen. But then you felt guilty kind of asking because it's like, okay, we know we got this whole situation <laughs> right. with this virus. Yeah. Right. How many people you live with, first of yeah. all? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all yeah. mask up. Yeah, yeah, vaccinated, boosted, what's going on, but yes. it's, a, it's a lot to consider. Well, what's mm -hmm. funny is that most therapists uh, mm -hmm. flow between online and in person now. Still, So you're, right. you turn to your computer and then you're turning yes. to the person in front of you. And I, I like the mix. I'm glad people mm -hmm. are, yeah. are coming And I know back. you've mm -hmm. got some um, pointers in terms of how to, uh, what to look for when you're choosing a therapist, including in considering the therapist's specialty and your own needs. Oh, hands down. It's like, you know, you don't want to go to your general practitioner if you need a heart surgeon. Right. And so you really want to think about, well, what are my specific needs mm -hmm. and what's their niche? What's 
their specialty. And then impression of comfort. What oh, does that mean? I say impression of comfort because one of the most predictive factors mm -hmm. for outcomes in therapy is the therapeutic alliance, mm -hmm. meaning how comfortable I feel with you, how much I feel like you care. And so what is your initial impression of how you feel this mm -hmm. therapist cares with you and how they can join in with you and make you feel what that kind comfort, of comfortable engagement and at ease. looks like, yes. right? And then of course the big one for so many folks, costs. Hands down. So you want to consider do they take my insurance? What is the cost? Can I pay out of pocket? Do they have payment plans? Mm -hmm. Do they have a sliding fee? Mm -hmm. And so you want to, you know, make sure that you're able to afford uh, the services as well. And researching the, the resources, mm -hmm. what does that look like? So I think that also aligns with the comfort. So if they have like an online presence, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think that you would like to engage with them? Mm -hmm. um, are their resources speaking directly to your needs? Do they seem genuine? Uh, what are their free resources? What is their online presence? Does there seem to be some congruency mm -hmm. with the messages that they're um, teaching and their lifestyle? So you can really do a lot of research yeah, nowadays can. that you, you couldn't do in and, times past. And I guess that doesn't mean though if you find somebody maybe who's old or just old school and it doesn't have a lot of online presence doesn't mean they're not going to be good that actually no. might be a better fit for some right. folks right? Mm -hmm. right and then you mentioned timeline yes timeline so you know some people you know they want to get you on their books forever <laughs> you know mm. for a very long term process you know do you want this uh, to be a little bit more shorter term or do you feel like oh no my needs are pressing I need to see you every week do you have that level of availability right. and are, is this going to be a forever relationship <laughs> or, right. Train differently, yes. so brief models, mm -hmm. long models, um, but you have to kind of know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people take what the therapist or the psychologist gives versus mm -hmm. saying, do you have anything that will give me symptom relief or anxiety in the next two to four weeks? Mm -hmm. Or hey, I'd like to talk about oh, my trauma. Okay, looking I'd like at to it literally. It. So you yeah. can kind of go in and ask for what you line. need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Good you don't have to know. just sit there and look. You can right. say, this is what I need. <laughs> yeah. and lay right, on I need to talk about my mama right, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Understood. This is a great start to what I can tell is going to be a really informative conversation. When we return, her first experience almost turned her completely off of therapy for good. That is until she started asking the right questions. You're going to hear about her therapy experience coming up. So you like the show? Then let's connect on social media. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Porsche TV Show. Welcome back to The Conversation. We've been talking to Dr. Cassandra Bolar and Dr. Alduin Tart about how important it is to get some therapy and how to find the right therapist. My next guest decided to seek therapy after realizing she needed someone other than her friends to talk to about life. And things just didn't go quite as planned. It's just not what you thought was going to happen, right? right. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Celestial. Washington. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us and for being willing to talk about something so personal. Mm -hmm. So tell us what happened. You, we like all of us, right? You're talking to your friends and your friends are like, mm-hmm, girl. But there's not a lot of help in mm-hmm, girl, mm -hmm. when you recognize you need a little bit more help. What happened? Yeah, so when I graduated high school, you know, of course, everybody's excited about starting life and just being on the journey of adulthood. Right. And I realized quickly I did not like my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did not like the way my life was going. Going. So I decided that I needed to vent. I needed to let my friends know what is what is going on with me. Why do I feel so sad or, mm. or depressed about life? And a lot of times they wanted to be there for me, but right. they didn't know exactly what advice to give me to move forward. And they with weren't life. equipped for that. Right. There's sister girl conversations, and then there's recognizing that you need to go to a deeper level, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So what happens? That's when I decided to reach out to my job resources to see mm -hmm. what they had available, Good move. and they referred me to one of our own site therapist mm -hmm. and that's when I decided to go um, unfortunately it was not the best experience for me what um, happened what went wrong it seemed like there was a, a clear disconnect with me and the therapist how um, so there was for one cultural differences mm -hmm. so I felt they couldn't understand exactly where I was coming from mm -hmm. 
the demeanor was very just, um, what is the word, standoffish. Mm. You're talking about <laughs> yeah. like that initial consultation yeah. where they're asking you questions, right. was it question and answer mm -hmm. or more taking lots of it notes and not so a lot of... Just taking notes, mm -hmm. not not really conversating with me. So me being the person at the time having so much anxiety, I was like, oh mm. my goodness, these spaces in between talks is just getting very stressful. So I decided to not go any longer. Um, however, it did push me on my steps to going towards a holistic pathway, okay. which eventually led me to my great therapist that I have now. Okay. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that experience. I saw sure. both of you nodding your head <laughs> as you heard about the uh, about Celestial's experience. Mm -hmm. This is common, right? Yeah. Yes, most definitely, yeah. very common. Dr. Bullard, tell you, our first job is to get you to come back. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest, <laughs> yes. all right? Uh, she may not say it like that, but, <laughs> but it's to establish rapport mm -hmm. and make yes. you feel comfortable and make you feel heard. We, we may note, take, and, and, and chart. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, it goes along with, you know, the medical model and, and making sure that we hear you. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to make you see, feel seen and validated mm -hmm. and when possible in the first session, actually help you understand what's going on and give you a treatment plan and say, hey, this is how we're going to help you get from point A to point B. Right. Mm -hmm. there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be silence, but expect that there a lot of that is, it's an intake process, yes. right? It's taking in some information, but it shouldn't feel like you're being observed. Yes, and there are different approaches that utilize a little bit more note-taking, but I think you need to preface and let your clients know that. And actually, CBT, um, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, a lot of it is that first uh, session is not even considered a session. It's more so considered, you know, an intake process, but they let them know that I'm here for information gathering and so that you can set the expectation as well. So and how do you set those expectations? I mean, before you set foot in any mm -hmm. therapist's office, right, you need to kind of have some goals of your own. What are you, why are you going? Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to let them know exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. I would like to have better communication with my wife because yes. we argue every day and mm -hmm. I don't want to go into Christmas arguing. Are there any tips and tools you can provide for us today in helping me move forward? Hey, my anxiety is level 10. And I don't want to lose my job. I'm tired yeah. of mm. overthinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tools and techniques, or can you tell me what your training is, or how you can help someone like me? Yeah. But I think a lot of clients are afraid to even the playing field yes. mm -hmm. with, with mm -hmm. therapists. But mm -hmm. we absolutely ex actually enjoy that because yes. it gives us some focus. Right. Yes, and it actually helps us. And it really is a relationship. Right. And, you know, both parties add to the relationship. And so, really, you can have the most amazing therapist in the world but they only do half of the work right and the other half of the work is for but it the sounds like quickly before we wrap up though it sounds like though you're going to have to also be honest with yourself yes that there's yeah. going to be some things asked of you and you had, you said that's what you had to realize too absolutely. right absolutely I'm so grateful um, through the holistic health and the going on that path it made me realize I had a lot of self-awareness I had to come aware of mm -hmm. and through that knowledge, I was able to actually speak to my therapist and tell them exactly what I needed. So I'm grateful. I'm glad yes. that all worked out when it was all said and done. Great conversation. Appreciate your candor. Stand by. We're going to keep talking here just a moment. Up next, <laughs> Dr. Bolar and Dr. Tart help guide some of our viewers who are on the road to therapy. My goodness, there are a lot of therapists out there, and we're talking today about how you can find the one who is right for you. The therapy is important, but so is setting some concrete goals. And we've been talking to Dr. Cassandra Bolar and Dr. Alduin Tart and viewer Celestial Washington about the journey that you've gone on and what you want patients to know. Because the truth is, there are there, there's not one size fits all for therapy. Clearly, the two of you have different styles that I'm sure our viewers have already become acquainted with. Yes. There's the soft and gentle approach, and then there's, listen, look here, straight shooting, right? right. And some people need those different, both work. Mm -hmm. But the, that's what you need to also figure out as a, as a patient going into the therapy, right? Mm -hmm. And we change styles for the yes. client. We mm -hmm. have to do what works. Some people mm -hmm. say, I want 
you, we typically ask, yes. if I have to confront you, uh, what do you want? You want straight up? That's great, right? You want mm -hmm. soft and gentle? Mm -hmm. You want me to ask a question? Mm -hmm. People will tell you mm -hmm. how, how much growth, how fast do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Do I have permission to push you or mm -hmm. push back? Yes. But I also know that, you know, you're also the expert too, right? So yes, you're open to some suggestions, but some of this is you've got to get to a point where the patient trusts you know what you're doing and you're trying to help these people on a journey, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and we've gone through so much training and even after you go to school, you know, you, you get trained in different um, methods of therapy mm -hmm. and I think that goes back to that therapeutic alliance. A part of that is the trust factor. You trust that they have the best interest at mind, everything that is at their disposal. Even if it is their personality, they're going to try to use it right. to meet your needs the best way possible. And sometimes I have to stretch my, my wings as well and yeah. be a little more pressing. And Celestia, that's what you have really figured out is it all about trust, right? Yes, yes sure. indeed. Well, we've got yeah. some viewers who uh, wrote in for this episode and sent some videos too. And one of them is a young man from Texas who has a question about how to find a therapist. Take a look. Hello, Portia. My name is Philip Bilal, and I think that therapy is super important. I think that a lot of people need it, and it's definitely become more popular over the last five to six years. But my question is, I was having a lot of trouble finding the right therapist, and specifically a black male therapist. So I'm just wondering, can you help me? So what do you do when you're looking specifically like Philip was is for a specific kind of therapist? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not saying that a white woman or a black man can't work for someone else. But what do you do when you're trying to be specific? Yes, I say Google is your friend. Um, you know, uh, therapists who serve are, are African-American therapists, male therapists, and actually do a search like that. Um, there is therapy, therapy for black girls. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you, it's actually, it shows you all of the therapists who are African-American women um, and it's a directory. And so Google is your friend in that respect. You and gotta ask, find it. And ask and call a black male therapist and say, if mm -hmm. it's not you, who do you refer? Who would you refer Because we know, to? we know mm -hmm. plenty of African-American American. I mean, right. we saw the 4.1 percent. So I'm not saying there's a whole bunch of us. Right. But we're not Bigfoot. But you got to right. find. You gotta right. Find but, you, but you have to know. So call. So you can call mm -hmm. your insurance company and say, Hey, I want to work with an African American, African right. female. I want to work with someone who understands my culture. Right. They will find that person for you. Let's find, listen to the next viewer. She says she went to a therapist for help and got a lot more than she bargained for on the couch. Listen. Hi Portia, my name is Neela. I truly believe that therapy is great for everyone. However, my last experience with my therapist was something else because on my second session, he starts crying. So how is it that a therapist can start crying and try to help me out of my crisis situation? So can you help me out? I am so sorry that happened. No, that's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to happen. It's something called countertransference, hmm. whereby, you know, something that the client is going through, it kind of triggers something within the therapist, mm -hmm. and they're kind of transferring their thoughts and emotions into the process. Wow. But sometimes okay. it's empathy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're talking about things that happen to you, we are not computers. Yes. We're right. going to feel that. You're Part gonna, of what okay. makes you feel point. comfortable is that you're not just a patient. Mm -hmm. You're your first name. And when you're talking about what mm -hmm. happened to you, it is not uncommon for therapists to have emotions. To have an emotion. Yes. That's fair. So we got to give yeah. you some grace on that. I know there's some things you said we should consider starting with giving this time to be, make it a good fit. Yes, yes. And I think I'm so grateful that you didn't give up on your journey in finding a therapist. Sometimes it takes time and your assessment of this being a good fit it oftentimes is continuing on after you even see them for multiple times and so having the courage to say oh well maybe this is not the best fit but continuing on to work with someone else I think is a courageous step until you find that right which person. brings us to obviously keep it up until you yes. find the right fit and sometimes it means you might have to find a new therapist yes yeah, don't quit therapy just yes. change, change therapists because the I will yes. tell you we yes. want you to find styles. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll, we refer out all the time. Say this is not working for me. Quickly, yes. how right. do you do that? How do you say because you do have a relationship with this right. person? How do you say we're required? This we can't just quit on you. We have to send yes. you someone. We'll say, mm -hmm. listen, you know, you might want a different approach, or you know, this is not effective for you, or I want you. you, you it sounds like say say I see a woman who she wants to talk about maybe some trauma, but she feels uncomfortable talking, talking about her sexual trauma right. to a man. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, listen, you don't have to work that. 
Let's yeah. 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 refer you to mm -hmm. so that you can feel comfortable. Celestra, quickly, mm -hmm. what did you say when you realized it was time to go? Thanks. I'm just no, I didn't say anything. You just didn't come back. You didn't come back. We already knew that's how that was it goes down a lot. Last time you saw me. Last time you go see me. Great conversation. I thank all three of you for being a part of this. It's so important, a part, such an important part of health self care. So we know that this is helpful to a lot of folks out there today. We will be right back. Okay, so listen, I want to take a moment just to congratulate you for deciding to put your mental health and your well-being first this year. Your decision to even find a therapist means you are ready to do some really important work this year. And remember what Dr. Bolar and Dr. Tart said. Think about what your goals are for therapy and then be prepared to put in some work. A good therapist is going to challenge you to do some things that aren't easy, but remember, you're worth it. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. Until then, be the reason why someone smiles today.